What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome to an interesting little video. This is going to be a casual introduction to competitive Pokemon. I know that um, I'm not like the best battler there is in the world, I consider myself pretty competent though, and I know that there are a lot of people that have come to my channel, especially of late, that didn't come here specifically for the Pokemon, maybe see me uploading Pokemon every single weekend, participate in leagues, occasionally do fun lives with friends and such, and don't really understand what competitive Pokemon is, or have played the games, but can't really follow along, and I wanted to make this as a quick little introduction, so even if it, it doesn't become your favorite thing, even if you don't love love it as much as I do, um, you can at least follow along and learn to enjoy watching it. And yeah, that's all there. That, uh, that's all that there is to this. I'm just gonna go over a lot of the mechanics of competitive Pokemon. It's gonna be very informal. I'm just kind of kind of throw words at you, explain things, and not get all super technical. It uh, there's a lot behind Pokemon um, that you really don't experience in the the first playthrough. I'm sure almost everyone watching this video has played Pokemon at some point, but there's really a lot of depth to the battle mechanic, and that's what I kind of want to highlight here. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about this website I'm on right now, Pokemon Showdown. This is a battle simulator, and this is where you're going to do a uh, majority of your battling, if you ever do any battling. And this is where you're going to see me do like 99% of my battling too. And it's a great site for building teams. A lot of times in the games, you only um, can build a team as well as, you know, the Pokemon you can find, the time you can spend training, getting them to level 100 and stuff. But here, you can just simulate teams. I can build, you know, a team with a Mega Scizor with the moves I want that it can learn, of course, um, and with, you know, all the stats that I want it to, and I'll get into that in just a minute, but that's why something like Pokemon Showdown is important to battlers. It just stresses the battle. It's kind of like if you have infinite resources, if you had infinite time to make whatever team you wanted, what would your battling be like? And yeah, um, so now let's get into some of the battle mechanics. What I am going to do is I'm going to go over all the different parts of this screen right now. I know there are a lot of numbers, a lot of graphs. Um, a lot of stuff you might not be familiar with and it can be kind of overwhelming. Just follow along with me. Don't worry about anything until I get there. The the first of which is the Pokemon. This part right here. You obviously choose the Pokemon. There are a lot of them. Over 700. Um, there might even be over 800 now with Gen 7. But uh, that's pretty straightforward, I'd imagine. There's a nickname. This is Oramundo. Shout out to Don and Rafa. Um, love naming my Infernape that. There are the details. Level 100. Um, there are certain metagames. Almost all of them will use level 100 Pokemon. The Nintendo sponsored um, or Nintendo supported format um, uses level 50 Pokemon. There's Little Cup, which is for under evolved or like really tiny Pokemon that uses level 5 Pokemon. But as you know, for the most part, it's going to be level 100. You know, a lot of people that haven't played competitive before come back uh, or ask about Showdown and they're like, oh, are all the Pokemon level 100? And it's like the level isn't even really relevant. The, the level should be, you know, uniform at least. So. Yeah, the, the gender can play a role, but it's not too big of a deal. Happiness. This affects certain moves. There's a move called Return that is dependent on happiness. And, you know, Frustration is also dependent on happiness, except it's inversely related. So the lower your happiness is, the stronger Frustration gets. Shiny, of course, you can make your Pokemon shiny if you want. Um, it's not, it doesn't have an impact on its um, battling capabilities. Um, but yeah, next up, we've got Items. Yes, every Pokemon can hold an item, and all these items have a bunch of different uses. Well, the item that I currently have right now is a Choice Scarf. What that means is I can only choose one Pokemon until I switch out and then come back in, or choose one move. Uh, so I, for example, I go in with Infernape, and I choose Close Combat. Until I switch out and then come back in, I can't pick any other move than Choice, um, <laughs> than Close Combat. However, my speed is 50% higher than it normally is which has its benefits. Um, there's something similar with Choice Band, where it increases your attack, or Choice Specs, which increases your special attack. There's Assault Vest, increases your special defense, but you can only use attacking moves. It's um, There are a lot of different items, as you can see, and they all have their own different uses, and they're all really interesting. But uh, yeah, you can choose your item, and that's that. Um, then there's the ability. The ability is kind of like a little, it adds an extra, like, I don't know, power or pro or poten potentially a con even um, to your Pokemon. And it's kind of like a secondary effect, something that incor gets incorporated into your strategy for that Pokemon. So, for example, Infernape has access to Blaze and Iron Fist. Blaze means that when you have one third or less HP, I mean, you, I know you guys can read, its fire attacks will do an extra 50%. How might that be relevant? Well, maybe you're running a Focus Sash set. So, with a Focus Sash, 
if you have 100% HP and get hit by an attack that would normally knock you out, you um, actually live that with 1 HP because of your Focus Sash. Now, why would that be relevant? If you're a Blaze, Focus Sash, Infernape, there would be some good synergy there so that, you know, if you anticipate living a hit, you can go for something like Fire Blast or Flare Blitz, which will be particularly powerful because of that Blaze. However, you might also want to use something like Iron Fist, which increases the punch base attacks um, by 20%. Meaning you can use Thunder Punch, Mock Punch, um, Fire Punch, and they'll do more damage than anticipated or than usual. Um, so yeah, and a lot of Pokemon have you know multiple abilities, and sometimes multiple of them are useful. Some of them, no sometimes none of them are useful, like Florges, um, unless you're in doubles. So it's important to understand what the abilities do for a particular Pokemon. Next up, we got the moves. Um, I'm sure all you guys know you can choose four different moves for your Pokemon, you can choose less than that, and there are situations, um, very rare, but there are situations in which it is advantageous to have less than four moves, but that's pretty straightforward. Now, what is typically the most confusing for people are EVs and IVs and natures. I'm gonna start off with IVs because they're, in my opinion, a little bit more um, simple. Um, IVs, I believe, stand for independent values. Um, I'm not 100% sure, actually. I think of them as innate values. They basically, talk about um, kind of like a starting point for that particular stat. So all of them are 31 right now because that's the highest it can go. It can range from I believe 1 to 31, it might be 5 to 31 actually, but um, actually no, it ranges from 0 to 31 now that I think about it. And the idea is this is kind of like your Pokemon starting point, so at level 1, um, with absolutely no experience, what is that Pokemon stat going to be? And that's what the IV is. It's kind of like the starting point from which your Pokemon grows. And speaking of Pokemon growth, I'm going to talk about the nature. You'll see down here in the lower left corner, nature. Um, what this is, is kind of like determining a growth pattern. With every single nature, you basically choose one stat to increase and one stat to decrease. What does that mean? Well, each Pokemon has base stats, so Infernape has naturally relatively high attack and special attack and speed. So as it grows up, as it evolves, or as it levels up, it's going to have a naturally high attack stat, whereas its special defense stat might be relatively low. However, um, as you grow, your nature affects the growth of certain stats. So in this particular case, I have a Jolly nature, meaning that my speed would normally grow at a certain rate, and it would get to a certain point just because it's an Infernape. But if I'm a Jolly nature, my speed will grow somewhat faster than normal, so that I have a relatively higher speed than normal um, when at level 100. However, that can't be done for free. And the sacrifice here is special attack. So my special attack um, actually increases at a decreased rate, so that its end point is going to be lower than anticipated. And because there are five different stats that are affected by natures, attack, defense, special attack, special defense, and speed, there are 25 different natures, five of which are neutral. Um, you know, you increase one and then decrease the other, and there are five natures that increase one stat and then also decrease the same stat, so they have like neutral natures. And these natures are crucial to developing sets, which are kind of like combinations of all of these stats, moves, items, abilities, everything. And then lastly, we have EVs. Now, EVs are effort values. These are basically the answer to the, the playground, the recess question when you were in grade school of, oh, I bet a Pokemon that you actually train is a lot stronger than if you just get it to level 100 with rare candies. And that um, as you battle Pokemon, you gain these effort values. And what these effort values do are they, they add points to a particular stat. So, for example, if you, I think, Starlies or Starlies or Rattatas, um, if you beat those, you get speed EVs. And so for every four speed EVs you get, when you level up, that will add one point to that stat. However, you can't go above 255 EVs in a particular stat. So the typical max used is 252, because that's the largest multiple of four less than 255. And you can only have a maximum of, uh, what is it exactly again? I think it's like 500... I think it's like 510 EVs is the maximum amount of EVs a Pokemon can have, um, which means you can really only use 508 because that's the largest multiple of four, less than 510. And so you can distribute these EVs into different stats 
to boost those stats. So in this particular case, um, you can see as I change the amount of EVs invested, my attack stat increases and decreases. And with this particular Infernape, I have all physical attacks, so I'm going to want my physical attack to be higher. Speaking of which, there are two different types of attack and defense. Attack is for physical attacks, attacks that make contact with the opponent, with a couple of rare exceptions. And special attacks for special attacks, like Thunderbolt, Psychic, Surf, kind of like, more like magic oriented if you want to think about it that way, as opposed to actual physical contact with the opponent. And then defense and special defense are for those respective types of attacks as well in the same way, or in the, yeah, in the same manner as attack and special attack. And so those are kind of like the basics. And when you consider all of these together, you get what's called a set. Now, this particular set is called Choice, um, Choice Scarf Infernape in that it's a very physical set. Um, it's got U-Turn, which is very common to um, a Choice Scarf set because it maintains momentum. U-Turn, you use an attack and then you switch out. So you can see if your opponent switches or not and then transition into a Pokemon that takes a potential hit very well or you know gains you momentum that sort of thing but there are a lot of different sets for a lot of different pokemon and where can you find a lot of these sets there's a site called smogon and so this is smogon um, university and you can see here we're in x y um so gen 6 um ou or uu and we have infernape it tells you all the stats and it tells you an overview of you know what are some of infernape's strengths and weaknesses it's got this nice paragraph and then it has a whole bunch of different sets it can use nasty plot so nasty plot an attack that boosts your special attack plus three different special attacking moves um the close combat and vacuum wave uh is two different options to potentially cover against other pokemon that might want to come in the item is life orb which improves your attack or damage output by 30 percent and this is the recommended ev spread and then it talks about all the different moves and why they're useful and then it talks about the set as a whole and tips on how to use this sort of a set and what other mons typically are good for this type of pokemon and then it talks about all the other different sets all out attacker um you know choice band swords dance choice scarf and this looks awfully familiar right um and then of course lead there are a lot of different sets and smogon has these sorts of sets for almost every single type of pokemon the reason i'm in xy right now is because for i believe almost every single pokemon they have them already uh, sun and moon is being updated as we speak um although a lot of the more common pokemon already have their sets talking about now i do want to talk about tiers because not all pokemon are created equal some are definitely bad and some are definitely incredible super good so there are a lot of different tiers um, for example, the most commonly played one, and arguably the most competitive, is overused. These are, well, Pokemon as explained right here. And these are Pokemon that are really good, but not quite broken. And in particular, um, let's see here, I'll switch to Sun and Moon right now. And it has, you know, there are certain things that are banned, like Gengarite, Kangaskhanite, because Mega Gengar, Mega Kangaskhan are essentially too good for this tier. There are all these different Pokemon that are currently in OU. And if I wanted to, I could go to something like Tapu Bulu and see an overview of, um, you know, what are its strong points, what are its weaknesses. Talk about different types of sets that are commonly used for Tapu Bulu. And you're probably thinking, okay, this is a little overwhelming and I don't even know where to start. Well, what's a really good idea, at least in my opinion, is um, to try building a team is to try building a team to see what you can do. See which Pokemon you like, can you put them together, and start learning sets. A lot of Pokemon is knowledge, and knowing what to expect from potential Pokemon. It, does this um, Celebi I'm going up against, like what is it gonna do, what can it do? It could be a Swords Dance set, it could be a Nasty Plot set, Baton Pass, it could be a Rocks, you know, T-Wave set. There are a lot of different things, and so how do you get better you get better by starting to learn Pokemon. Um, you try building a team, and that way you learn about six Pokemon. You learn about potential Pokemon you'll run into. You watch battlers, and you watch them battle. You see how they battle. You see what Pokemon they use. You see what Pokemon their opponents use, and you start to learn what certain Pokemon do, depending on you know their tier, depending on team composition and such. And speaking of people to watch, 
I watch PokeAimMD all the time. Um, you guys can see this guy's channel. He has a ton of competitive Pokemon stuff and, you know, Pokemon stuff in general. He's a really great battler. He's what I've learned a lot of my Pokemon play from. And I highly encourage you guys to check out his channel, watch a bunch of his lives where he goes into a bunch of different tiers, uses a bunch of different types of Pokemon and, you know, showcases them and plays really well with them or sometimes has fun and goofs around with them. There are a lot of different ways to play Pokemon, of course. And speaking of those different ways to play Pokemon, there are, this is something I'll get into in a minute, um, there are a bunch of different play styles. If you look at my teams uh, from this particular folder, the SFL, a lot of them are offensive. There's a typical play style called hyper offense, which is just kind of hitting hard over and over and over, trying to maintain momentum from playing aggressively and risky. However, that's not the only way you can play. You can also play relatively stally, where you can play very safely, do gradual damage, play with very bulky Pokemon that can tank hits, and maybe not necessarily dish out damage. Um, something like that. You can play somewhere in between called Balanced, where you have a few Pokemon that you can use to pivot, where you have a couple Pokemon that can set up and sweep, you have a couple Pokemon that can tank hits, um, that can set up hazards. Speaking of which, there's there's so many to go, so many things to go over in Pokemon. If you want me, by the way, if you guys are listening to this, watching this, and you want me to go in particular into one type of, I don't know, uh, Pokemon, one type of thing that I mentioned today, that I you know don't cover as well as you'd like me to, just let me know and I'll make a little tutorial on it. Um, but yeah, speaking of hazards, this is just kind of very, by the way, this is very impromptu, very kind of just flowing. Um, I don't really have an agenda, a plan really to go through all this, but I'm just kind of seeing where it takes me. And yeah, so for example, hazards. Stealth Rock, one of the best moves in the game. You'll never see it in the uh, games themselves, but in competitive Pokemon, Hazards are super, super, super important. You absolutely need to be able to set up hazards to get residual or like chip damage on a bunch of different things. There's stealth rocks, spikes, toxic spikes, and that's something that's essential to playing at a high level. Also, where where the music go? Music. Oh, the uh, my internet. Internet, no. I don't know why my internet was just acting up, but yeah, so hazards are a really important part, and there are a couple terms I might have used um, that you might not be aware of. Setting up. Setting up is a really important concept. That basically means boosting your stats or um, doing some move that helps with like a more long-term goal in mind. For example, Swords Dance. It raises your attack stat by two stages, meaning it gets doubled in a, uh, yeah, doubled. And what that means is rather than go for bullet punch twice, I can go for swords dance once and then bullet punch, do the same damage output, and then from there on, my bullet punches will always be double damage. And if I wanted to potentially sweep, that's really important. And that's what I mean by setting up. And there are certain Pokemon that are simply good at setting up, like Scizor in this case, or you know, for a hazard setter, something like Omastar. For a potential Scarf user, you could have something like Gengar, or a Life Orb user like Infernape. There are certain Pokemon that have certain roles, certain sets. Something like Tapu Fini is really well known for Defog. That's a move that gets rid of hazards on your side of the field and the opponent's side of the field. There are also Pokemon that learn Rapid Spin, which is a move that gets rid of hazards on your side of the field. And you can learn a lot of this by simply watching people play and use these sorts of concepts and trying to build a team with all these different roles that function and synergize well. And talking about playing, um, there are certain concepts that are just integral to doing well in the game. You have to understand momentum and you have to understand win conditions. And I actually did prepare one replay ahead of time to talk about win conditions and Team preview. Uh, this is from the SFL, which is a league I participated in a while ago. Um, it was just starting off with the Sun Moon meta, and basically, I built this team and wasn't sure exactly what Jerry, uh, my opponent, was going to be bringing. However, when looking at my team and looking at his team, I have a choice scarf in Fernape, and it does so well against his team. So I identified that as a very clear win condition. I could also potentially have almost stars a win condition, but it depends. And those, these are things to be able to identify right off the bat. Basically, if I weaken Volcanion, 
or if I weaken uh, Golisopod, my Infernape can sweep with Flare Blitz. I need to get a little bit of chip damage off on Tapu Lele. I need to really weaken Volcanion if I want to sweep with Flare Blitz. Um, and I need to get Golisopod down to like 60% or so, if I remember the calc correctly, um, in order to sweep. So I'm going to play the game with that in mind. So as I play through the game, what are my goals? To get chip damage on things, to keep hazards off my side of the field, to keep Infernape healthy. In case he has something I don't anticipate, as long as he has Accelerock from Lycanroc available, a priority move, I uh, or Aqua Jet from Golisopod, or First Impression from Golisopod, I want to make sure my Infernape can potentially take those hits and continue its sweep. I also want to make sure that if I'm going to be going for a Flare Blitz uh, sweep, I have enough health to not die from all the recoil. Um... Oh, I also just realized, shout out to this music. This music is so good. The Golden Rod City remix from Hoops and Hip Hop. Um, I didn't have it loaded because of the whole internet, or the looped because of the whole internet thing. But yeah, back to this. Um, so you'll see that I'm playing with Infernape in the back. He doesn't know what type of Infernape I am, but my whole idea is gonna be get up hazards so that I can get the necessary chip damage on everything, especially Lele, especially Volcanion, um, especially Golisopod, and then hopefully, get an Infernape sweep later on. Now before that, you'll probably notice there are some times where um, I switch or he switches as I switch as well. So like, for example, I just showed that I have Sludge Wave. That's super effective on his um, Lorantis. So he's probably gonna switch into something that's potentially weak or immune to, or strong, resists or immune to Sludge Wave, which would be Excadrill. Now, I actually, go for Sludge Wave, even though this is a relatively easy prediction, because I want to bluff that I'm Choice Scarf, which is kind of, you know, eh. it's, a, it's a funny concept, but I am, I believe, X propelled and not Choice Scarf, but I want him to think that I'm Choice Scarf for later on in the game, potentially, or so that he doesn't think that my Infernape is probably going to be Choice Scarf. So, that's why I do that. Now, um, in this particular stance, I don't think he doubles, but, um, I know that I can go into this, um, I'll just, you know, roost up off the damage. Now this is a good opportunity for me. I know that I can't do a lot to this with Bullet Punch, but I can get some chip damage, which is really important, because this is one of the mons that I need to whittle away at for Infernape as my win condition. Um, and you'll see that now he's going to get up spikes. Again, I don't want my team getting whittled away. I have an important Pokemon with a Focus Sash. And if I'm not at 100% health, my focus sash won't work. So that's one of my priorities: is making sure my, you know, my Infernape won't be weakened when it comes in, and my focus sash stays intact. So I'm gonna keep defogging and getting rid of this thing's hazards. Um, and he can spike all day long, you know. Um, and now that there are no hazards, I can attack him, and he'll be forced out, and that sort of thing. Now. I think, is it this turn or is it the next turn? Um, I believe he can just pretty safely Leaf Storm here as I go into my Gengar, or no, he Synthesis is. Now he's gonna protect, he's gonna see that I go for Sludge Wave. Now, from his mentality, he thinks I'm Choice Scarf, right? So he thinks I'm locked into Sludge Wave. So he can go into his Excadrill here very safely, but I know that he, thinks that. I know because I've been bluffing the Choice Scarf all this time, I know that he thinks that I'm either going to switch or locked in or stay locked into Sludge Wave. So there's no threat on anything that would potentially switch in for him. So he can very safely go into his Excadrill. However, I outspeed Excadrill no matter what because I'm Choice Scarf. And I can go in here now and see what he wants to do. I don't know if this Excadrill is Choice Scarf or not. If he stays in and he thinks that my Gengar is Choice Scarf, he's probably Choice Scarf himself. Um, but I don't think he's Choice Scarf at this point, so what I can do is, because I basically threaten him, I can anticipate him to switch. I can predict him to switch and go for U-turn meaning I'll gain momentum and pick up a little bit of chip damage. So I go for the U-turn, weaken one of the mons that is, again, preventing a Infernape sweep um, and go into my Gengar. Now I go for Shadow Ball and there we go, Volcanion is gone. That is one of the Pokemon I needed gone to have a Flare Blitz sweep. At this point, Flare Blitz sweeps everything else except I need to be wary of that Accelerock from Lycanroc and maybe a little bit more damage on Golisopod. 
So at this point, the goal is, let's see if I can get up my hazards. Well, let's see if I can get a little bit more chip damage to make sure something isn't a focus sash. And uh, then we can sweep with Infernate. And now because I'm only taking 38%, I can roost up and eventually um, get some chip damage. Find some way to get my Omasarian to set up hazards. And let's see here. I go into Tapu Fini. Um, at this particular point, why did I switch back into Scizor? I was just at Scizor. If I anticipated the Tapu Lele, I should have just stayed in then, right? Well, I actually was scouting. I don't know if he has the Hidden Power Fire or not. So if I go into Tapu Fini, I can use that to my advantage. I can see if he has Hidden Power Fire to hit my Scizor. Similarly, if he has something to hit Tapu Fini super effectively, like Energy Ball, my Scizor resists it heavily. So predicting that, or not, e or considering that that might be an option, I go back into Scizor. And now similarly, I can see, what does he want to do right now? If he switches out, he either has Hidden Power Fire and is choice locked into Energy Ball now, or he doesn't have Hidden Power Fire or anything to hit me hard with. So I learn valuable information and I take note of that. And so that's why, at this point, I now know that he's not Scarfed, or he doesn't, or he is probably Choice Locked into Energy Ball, or doesn't have Hidden Power Fire, which is really good to know. Um, and because my Scizor is important, I can, um, what's it called? I want to save that, and I'm okay with getting rid of my Gengar, because look, now my Infernape just wins. So the goal is going to be... Let's see here, go into my Omastar. He goes for Sucker Punch, not a big deal. At this point, I just need to get up one spike, and that's pretty much the game. So, he goes for his Stealth Rock, which is okay at this point in the game. He misses Rock Slide. Admittedly, I know there's some stuff going on in the chat about hacks and all that, but it's not really the end of the world. At this point, I'm gonna get up as many hazards as possible to make my Flare Blitz KOs as clean as possible, so that I take the least amount of recoil as possible from my uh, Flare Blitz and can sweep through as many Pokemon as possible. So at this point, he still anticipates me to attack. I just get up my rocks, all three spikes, which means Pokemon are going to be taking at least 25% HP plus the amount of damage it'll take from Stealth Rock when they come in. And at this point, I don't care about my Omastar. I die, and then I go into... I don't go into Scizor, actually. Oh, I don't want to take an Accelerock, potentially, so I wanted to KO this. Um, of course, I don't need to worry about any crits or anything crazy from this, so I'll do that. And now he probably has Hidden Power Fire, but there's no reason for me to really over predict or anything like that. If he wants to go for Hidden Power Fire, if he wants to play aggressively and go for Energy Ball, I can easily sacrifice one of my Pokemon to bring in one of my others. And again, this at this point confirms, you notice how I was mentioning earlier that I could scout for Hidden Power Fire with Tapu Fini. Um, that he is probably choice locked because I know he has energy ball but was forced to switch out anyways when a Tapu Fini was right in front of his face. And yeah, at this point, I can just do some damage until um, and sacrifice something, right? I can just let one of my Pokemon die so I get a free, a safe switch into my um, Infernape and then click Flare Blitz and uh, win. So you'll see that I, he goes into his, uh, what's it called, his Excadrill, and then I go into Infernape, Flare Blitz, um, Protect, Flare Blitz, Flare Blitz, and that's a victory. So again, what did we notice from this battle? Win conditions. Looking at team preview and identifying what on your team can win and how, and a game plan to build towards that, or to lead towards that um, victory. Second of all, we saw that prediction is huge in Pokemon. Understanding the opponent's mindset, even playing around or bluffing things, and understanding how the opponent will play to make predictions to gain yourself momentum, to get chip damage, to put yourself in a more um, beneficial position. All of that is very integral to Pokemon. And something that a lot of new players like to do is make predictions when they don't need to. Um, typically, you can play safe. It's only knowing when you need to make a play that you should make a play. I didn't make plays often. I didn't pull a lot of double switches. I didn't read very hard when, um, just on average. I scouted if I needed to, I played safe, and only made a read when I needed to, and that led me to victory. And so, 
where to go from here, I recommend... Oh, and um, I should talk about this real quick. Pokemon Damage Calculator. Pokemon Showdown's Damage Calculator. Basically, for any Pokemon, um, they have a whole bunch of different sets. So if I want to run, like, I don't know, um, an Excelgor Spike lead set, and I want to see how much its Bug Buzz would do to an Abomasnow, I could input the relevant EVs, IVs, nature, ability, and item, etc. for both Pokemon and see what it would be like. I can also change the weather, I can change whether or not hazards are up. So for example, if Stealth Rock and three spikes are up, um, Bug Buzz is a guaranteed one-hit KO from this Excelgore. That sort of a thing, which is pretty cool. And yeah, now, where to go from here? I recommend you find someone to play with. Um, I know I can tell you with confidence that there will be opportunities to do, to meet other people through my channel um, to play Pokemon and within the next couple weeks on this channel in a really cool environment. However, there's also a Discord that I have on my channel where you can meet people that maybe are also looking to play and learn as well and you can you know hang out with them you can team build with them you can battle with them all that sort of thing um, you can talk to me about it you can ask me questions of course there you can also ask me questions in the comment section below and yeah um, I would recommend trying to find a team there are forums for these uh, there are forums for all of these different things um, for example you go to the Smogon forums they have a whole bunch of different teams you can pick up Pokemon, you can learn about what their like role is in the metagame right now, all that sort of thing, and you can hop on the ladder. I'm not a big fan of the showdown ladder right now, I love the counter league format more so than anything, but you need to battle to learn, and at least in the beginning you do, and you also need to watch people better than you um, battle to learn. So that's why I encourage you, again, check out PokeAim, uh, there are a bunch of other battlers that are really high up there, I'd recommend Jamvad, I'd recommend Lord Envy, um, Chimpact as well, A-Drive is up there too, and you can also watch my battles too, again, I said I'm pretty good, and I, in every one of my videos, I explain my thought process, I show the calculations, I show the team building process, why I have certain EVs, why I have natures, why I have moves, etc., so you can understand my thought process fully, and you can see how I battle, and hopefully learn from that, and try to incorporate those techniques and those practices in your own battling. And something else worth noting is, when you lose, you need to think about why. You need to think about why you lost and how you can improve from that and how you can anticipate better react to that situation, etc. in the future. That is crucial to improvement. And one last little bit is Pokemon is very much a game of odds. There are, you know, there's hacks is what it's called. There are roles, meaning, you know, Pokemon, depending on what attack you use and when you use it, there is a roll. So this attack can do 222 damage or it could do 264 damage. That could be really important in the match. You know, Fire Blast could miss sometimes. Flamethrower might burn you 10% of the time. There is hacks in this game and sometimes it can be frustrating. But I am going to say that sometimes it's inevitable, um, but almost always you can play around hacks. You can put yourself in a better position so that you don't need to worry about um, those rolls. You don't need to worry about those extra chances. You can put the odds in your favor. When you team build, if you don't want to have to miss Focus Blast, don't put Nalakazam on your team. You'll notice in my particular teams for, uh, what's it called? The SFL, um, a lot of my moves, you know, I never use moves that miss because I don't want them to. I don't want to risk that miss. I want to rely on constant damage and be able to play accordingly. I put the odds in my favor from before the battle even begins. And uh, yeah, um, so that's my little little tad, or tad bit about hacks and the like. If you have any more questions, again, just let me know. Um, in the comment section below if you guys want me to do a video about a particular concept i can definitely do that if you guys want to see more examples of a certain concept um of course just let me know and if you have any questions um you can also hit me up in the discord because that's super cool and the link to that the invite to that is in the description and again check out my battle videos they're they're fun and even if you don't get super into competitive pokemon i hope that this video at least enabled you to understand some of the mind games some of the mechanics some of the behind the scenes stuff that's going on in all of my Pokemon videos so that you guys can hopefully enjoy those too. But that's all I've got for this little casual introduction to competitive Pokemon. But until the next Pokemon video you watch, Dongarampa video you watch, next tutorial I do, whatever it is, 
this is Mimonite Zero, and this mission is complete.